Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. Happy Monday. Today's episode, we are talking about an Ethereum developer who is in prison because he taught people how to use blockchain. That's fucking nuts. It's free online for everybody, but he taught them and now he's in prison. So we'll explore that. If you think that's interesting, you should definitely check out today's episode. Now, yesterday, Vitalik started this tweet storm saying, I refuse to take the convenient path of throwing Virgil under the bus because I firmly believe that would be wrong. I'm signing reasoning below. Now, he links to an article here saying, let's start a petition to free Virgil Griffith. So what's going on? What's the story? Well, Ethereum co-founder declared his solidity with Virgil Griffith, the American citizen arrested for his blockchain educational activities in North Korea. Ugh, enemy of the United States. You do anything with an enemy of the United States and you're an enemy of the United States. That is true. Well, apparently, Griffith, a 36-year-old U.S. citizen living in Singapore, was arrested at the L.A. airport on November 29th and is said to be charged with conspiring to violate the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. Now, what is that act? That act was enacted October 28th of 1977 and is a United States federal law authorizing the president to regulate international commerce after declaring a national emergency in response to any unusual and extraordinary threat to the United States which has its source in whole or substantial part outside the United States. So basically, because North Korea is not an ally of the United States because they potentially have nuclear weapons, anything that you do with North Korea can potentially be an International Emergency Economic Powers Act infringement. So... This goes on further. The U.S. Justice Department has accused Griffith of providing highly technical information to North Korea, knowing that this information could be used to help North Korea launder money and evade sanctions. This highly technical information would be how to use blockchain, something that anybody can find anywhere in the world because it's open source. Now, Griffith is alleged to have illegally traveled to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to deliver a a conference presentation entitled Blockchain and Peace on Cryptocurrencies and Blockchain. In declaring his support of Griffith, Buterin prefaced his arguments by disclosing a conflict of interest insofar as Griffith is a friend of his. All, he also underscored that the Ethereum Foundation has provided no assistance to his trip and was not allowed with Griffith's personal decision, one that Buterin claims many counseled against. This notwithstanding, he wrote, this would be uh, Vitalik writing, geopolitical open-mindedness is a virtue. That's right, we live in a world all together. We don't have to be these little nation states anymore. It's admirable to go to a group of people that one has been trained since childhood to believe is maximum evil enemy and hear what they have to say. The world would be better if more people on all sides did that. That's a good point. I was reading this book called Transurfing, and he talks about how we make bees to be an enemy because we go up to a beehive and we prod the beehive with a big stick. And then the bees get all angry because we're knocking the shit out of their house. And then they come out and attack, and we make the, e- the bees an enemy. Now, I'm not saying that's how it happened with Korea. I don't exactly know the history about it. But is that what happened? I don't know. So, anyways, on to this thing. This article here is saying, this was published yesterday, let's start a petition to free Virgil. Because guess what? I mean, he went to North Korea and taught people how to use blockchain, something that if they had internet access, they could have learned on their own. But he was going teaching blockchain and peace. Now, because this is an infringement of the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, which basically uh, bars black balls, any, or black ball, I don't know, blue ball, no, not blue ball. Anyway, it bars anybody who's an enemy of the United States from, from receiving any money, basically. That's what it does. He's now an enemy of the state. Because, guess what? With cryptocurrencies, they could potentially figure out how to not need these, get around these economic sanctions. Now, in the responses to this article here, Somebody did say Joseph Fiskella from Flow Blockchain. He says, why are we ignoring the fact that he allegedly attempted to send a sum of cryptocurrency from South Korea to North Korea, which is illegal, especially when he admitted that he was willfully evading sanctions. Talking about this as if he's being persecuted for spreading knowledge is at best completely false and at worst intellectually dishonest. So, I don't exactly know what is the truth. I wasn't there at the conference. I don't know exactly what he did. Some people say he's just teaching about blockchain. Some people say he is... spreading information to willfully evade sanctions, sending money from South Korea to North Korea. Guess what? With cryptocurrency, people can do it. It's Yeah, sure, it's illegal, but it's like super freaking easy to do. So, anyways, when stuff like this happens, it's like, okay, let's start a petition. But there's no information about a petition being started. 
And then I go and search. No, no results found. Nobody's starting a petition. I was going to say, let's sign this petition. Let's, you know, prove our solidarity. But no, nothing there. So anyways, that's going on. Keep an eye out for this petition. Keep an eye out for more information because he's 36 years old. He's now probably going to jail for life as a traitor of the United States because he taught people how to use cryptocurrencies. Messed up. This thing, the, like the important thing about this is look at how scared governments are of what cryptocurrencies can do. Look at how scared they are of a potential power. He didn't give them anything. He didn't give North Korea anything that they couldn't have figured out on their own. He just told them, hey, these are cryptocurrencies and here's how they work. You don't have to rely upon government money anymore. And he is now an enemy of the state. So that brings me to another person who's an enemy of the state, Ross Ulbricht. Now 2,253 days in prison for a heinous crime that he really didn't do. He was arrested for starting Silk Road, uh, but he was arrested for trumped up charges. And basically, he's got a double life plus 40 year sentence. Meanwhile, everyone else associated with Silk Road has 10 years max. The largest drug dealer on Silk Road, 10 years. Also, false allegations. And there were two corrupt federal investigators who were now in prison who were charged in this case, who basically had access to the whole Silk Road website for years before Ross was um, arrested. So if you don't know about this, go to freeross.org, read about it. It's one of the most messed up cases ever. There's a quarter million people who have signed this petition already. I've signed it. A lot of people I know have signed it because it is absolutely ridiculous. He's got two life sentences plus 40 years for basically creating a website where people could transact in Bitcoin. First use case for Bitcoin. Now, some people use it for bad stuff, but you know what? The most common thing purchased on Silk Road was marijuana, which is now legal almost everywhere in the United States. It's freaking ridiculous. Gets me angry. So go read that, sign it. Um, and also, check out the Monarch Wallet. Hold Bitcoin and 3,000 cryptocurrencies and Monarch Pay, the world's first decentralized recurring crypto payments. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace.